In this class, we're going to view the rivet structure tools. Specifically, for the case of metallic structures, and we're going to review in the Analyze card the placements of loads. Load cases and edge conditions. To complement the example we have already seen previously of reinforced concrete. In the file that you have in this class, you can observe that we have already completed some of the work, placing grids, and also in the elevation views are the levels that we're going to use. That's going to make our drawing process faster. As a first step, we would like to build our columns. So, let's use the CL shortcut on our keyboard as a quick entry, and if among the columns that are preset here, I'm going to use the one that says 300 by 300 millimeters, and I'm going to place it in the grids or intersections of the grids, between A and C, and from 1 to 3. This is how we place columns. The next step is to place the beams. We're going to place these beams on level 2, and they're going to be 165 by 300 millimeters. I'm also going to put them in grids by selecting A and C. In the same way, I'm going to use the tool Truss to place a truss. Specifically, this one that is preloaded, which is worn type with a subdivision of 10 panels. The height of the trusses will be 1,500. It is interesting that this worn type truss has a height at the beginning of the height is 1 meter. If we edit and see the families, we note that it is of 1 meter, then in the edge, we have an offset of 50 centimeters upwards. Then the height I'm going to place is 1,500 millimeters or 1.5 meters. We'll place that on each axis of 1, 2, and 3. We'll start with one at this intersection. This one, and this one. Now it's time to see a result from what we have drawn in a 3D view. Let's go to the 3D view, and here we can see our structure, the beams, the columns, and also the trusses. These trusses should be down with the top cord at the top of the column. Since this is not happening, I'm going to select all three and choose a filter. I'm just going to leave the trusses. I will apply an offset at the beginning and at the end of each truss of one meter negative. As we said before, this is the height in the initial part of the truss and its edges, so in this way, our structure is placed as it should be. Another interesting point is that on these edges, these elements still exist and are overlapped with the column, so we should delete them. For that, we're going to delete those elements. Selecting the beams, you see them there, and before you can erase it, the first thing we have to do is remove the pin. So we're going to remove the pin from these and erase. We can do it this way, we erase one and the other, and we do the same on this side. We select them, remove the pin, and erase it so they don't overlap. As the next step, we should place the beam system that we're going to use in the roof. And for that, we're going to use a beam system. In classes we studied, we can place this beam system in an analytical view. From a plant view, whether analytical or not. 
However, to place this system, it has to be a horizontal plane. To place them on a plane view, which is easier just by clicking, if we don't have a horizontal plane in the one that we're going to place the beam system, we must specify. Then in an inclined plane, and make the sketch. A good practice is to head towards an elevation view, go to the analytical visualization, and remove these elements. Note that here I see some structural elements that are not analytical. So I'm going to hide the whole category and I'm going to turn on the analytical elements pressing VG on the keyboard and I'm going to the analytical models and turn on all the analytical ones. So here I see the top of the chord is going and I will generate a reference plane. Let's pay attention to this because it is a good practice so that everything remains exactly in its place. I'm going to generate a reference plane. If this is the north view, this side is the east. So in this reference plane, I select it with the tab key. I apply a filter stay with the reference plane, and I'm going to name it East, and do the same on the other side. I will generate another reference plane on the axis of this analytical beam. Now I select it, and I'm going to call this West because I'm in a North view. With these two planes created, and with a name, I'm going to move to an analytical view, where I only see the longitudinal elements in its analytical form. Without the volumetric, and here I'm going to create a beam system. In this beam system, first of all, I'm going to configure the work plane so it's the one that I want. Let's start with east. I can show it, and we can see it here. It's on this side. Everything will be exactly in place. Now I can move inside the tool with the plan view where I would create a rectangle, apply the direction of the beams is toward the vertical direction, and now with the tool to align, Proceed to align each one of the edges towards the axes, so that it is just in the axis. It is always important to leave all these elements precisely positioned on the, on the axis, so that no unnecessary rotations are generated when we calculate. Then I can still apply more beam systems. I'm going to apply another one. I'm going to configure what's in the east. I apply the direction and align it with each of the axes. And now I can select these beam systems and apply a mirror with MM to B. In the horizontal view, we're going to see how it happens in 3D. So there are views already duplicated. Notice we're going to look at an elevation view. These straps really should stay up. To do that, I'm going to select one of them, right click on it, and then the drop down menu. Select all that are in the project, and I will set Z justification as bottom. Then 
That will make them move up, and that's how they are. On the sheets from the roof are placed. Then we've already placed it. But as we see in a 3D analytical view, any of the analytical elements have been moved. That is the advantage of Rivet. We can make the placement of the structural elements as close as possible to reality without affecting the analytical model. Now, as the last detail, I'm going to take this beam that's here and make a copy. Notice that it is already in the plane in which it is placed, and the copy will be 900 millimeters, such as in this section that didn't have straps. Now I've got my straps in the middle, and I've got my beams also. I will create a mezzanine to give a little more context to this ship. Then I go to a horizontal view, where I'm going to create a new elevation view. I can deselect all this analytical view in VG, or Visibility and Graphic, I will turn it off and return to my model to turn on the structure again so that it will be as it should. I'm going to create a new level with the keys LL, and this level I will call it Mezzanine. It will be approximately 3 meters high. Let's make it a little lower, maybe 250 centimeters or 2.5 meters. Now I'm going to place myself in the level, or rather the mezzanine level, and here I'm going to apply some new columns whose depth reaches level 1. I'm not going to put level 1 on the shaft. I'm going to make it shorter. Then here we can observe that in the axis of this beam we can edit it so that it is a distance of 3100. I'm going to generate a floor which goes from here up to here. In this floor, we're going to make it 25 centimeters thin. If we go to our 3D view, there's our mezzanine. So let's go back to that level and apply some beams. Which is not going to be in grids, but placed each. So here we have our complete system. Okay, finally, I'm going to create a roof. But notice, if I try to use this type of roof architectural system, and I try to use this roof type, the inclined work plane I'm working on doesn't allow me to create it. Then I'm going to use another tool. Let's go to an elevation view. I'm going to turn these structural views off again. And here I'm going to create the roof with this inclination. Now I'm going to roof, make a roof by extrusion. The plane we're working on, let's put it in grids 1, and this is going to be placed on level 2 without offset. Well then. I'm going to click on the inside of this one, the same inside this line, so that it is aligned with them. Next, I'm going to generate a line here and make a trim, so that this arrives just at the axis, same as the other line on this side.
I do a trim, another trim from here to here, and finally, a line on this side to make another trim. I can now remove these lines I used as help. Notice that this is going to be the axis, which we could call the axis of our roof. And I'm going to use this basic roof, steel sheets, which I have previously created that is already thin enough. And when creating it with certain extrusion, if we go to 3D view, there's our roof. But now we have to move it towards the opposite side. So we select it, go to the elevation view, and move this until we get it right. There it is. And finally, we're going to make it an offset of 200. But we know that it must be on the straps. Look at how simple it was to create our quite real modeling of the steel structure. This is a simple ship.